from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Get ready for a couple of big punching heavyweights to collide, Tommy Morrison and George Foreman. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Bontempo, along with Tony Page. Glad you're with us. Foreman and Morrison combining for 11 victories in a row. Let's see what happens in this one. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of the Las Vegas Hilton, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with stars and bars, weighing in at 226 pounds, this knockout artist has a professional record of 36 victories with 32 KOs against only one defeat. He comes here tonight from Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the number two ranked heavyweight in the world, Tommy the Duke Morrison. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in at 256 pounds. We have the 1968 Olympic gold medalist, who now as a professional is 72 and three with 67 KOs, which is the greatest knockout ratio in heavyweight history. Ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, presenting the former heavyweight champion of the world, B. WBO title at stake and very interestingly Tommy Morrison not looking at big George Foreman you get a look at George Foreman now as he is set to go referee Mills Lane of course the classic let's get it on phrase and Tony I like one thing he does tells you exactly at the start which punches are good which punches are not around the waistline that's why he's one of the best referees in the world and Right off the bat, I want to see Tommy Morrison. We know he throws a lot of punches. He tries for the knockout. I want to see the brawl of it work and see what Big George can do to counteract Morrison's power. George Foreman, the legend, loves to track down the ring, cut off his opponent, and then hammer them with the uppercuts like he did with Jerry Cooney. He's also stood in there and exchanged big shots with the likes of Evander Holofield. And of course, going back decades ago, the victories over Joe Frazier, the rumble against Muhammad Ali. You were just a young lad back then, right? Dave? <laughs> That's right. It's nice to remember <laughs> being young, Tony. Right now, Morrison is picking his spots. He, he's looking for that opening. Usually, he jumps on an opponent and starts throwing a lot of punches, head to the body. Right now, he's backing up and looking for that one big shot. Tommy Morrison, a big puncher in his own right. Probably as good a left hook as Jerry Cooney used to throw during his day. The question has been when he gets it, he's a much different fighter. The chin is suspect, and so he's a crowd-pleasing fighter. Now, when he came out against Dre Mercer, he was brilliant for three and a half rounds, Tony, but then he ran out of gas. He tried to get Mercer out of there early, and that's a problem with a lot of young fighters. If you don't have the gas in your tank, if your man's not out of there early and you keep throwing punches, you're out of there. There's Morrison trying to throw the overhand right, but this is a different Tommy Morrison. I'm, I'm still waiting for him to jump in and just wing and punches like he did against Mercer. Maybe he learned something. Well, he's moving his head a little bit more here. Yeah, you look, he's in a defensive posture, which is something you, you, know, you forget about that with Tommy Morrison. He doesn't have defense. Well, he's showing it here. Foreman's just coming forward. I'm just waiting for George to get that ramrod left jab going. What helps Morrison in his defensive posture is 
Basically, George Foreman not moving that quickly here, and if you've got your own footwork going, there's time to work on it. And you wonder if George is thinking, well, I can take my time because this kid's got a suspect chin, as you said. All I got to do is land a partial shot because he's got the power, but he has to set himself up to land that punch. George Foreman not the fastest of starters in round one. He's come around in the second round many times. Takes a round to get something under his belt. There's a good right hand by Morrison. Morrison tried it all earlier, and George blocked it. This one got through, so that might be a punch to watch as we go on. Tommy Morrison with some strategic offensive firepower here against George Foreman, not just opening up. Morrison fighting from a backwards position, which is defensive, but he's landing the blows. So Tommy Morrison showing some head movement, and there's a good right hand, certainly not afraid of George Foreman as he continues coming forward. The first round of this goes into the books, and a good one for Tommy Morrison. We'll be right back. Round two, Tommy Morrison, George Foreman. A good first round for Tommy Morrison. This is Dave Bontempo along with Tony Page. And Tony, in the first round, we saw more movement from Tommy Morrison and a smarter Morrison. And also a lot of overhand rights by Morrison. He has one of the best left hooks in the business, but he used his right hand, his overhand right, to kind of chop down George. But he started this round with a left hook. So he's letting the older foreman know, hey, I got a couple of punches I can use, but you got to watch for both of them. Makes you wonder where that right hand has been for him. I don't know, but now we've got to look at Foreman. Foreman's got to throw that left jab. He has a great one-two, but he's not in position to throw it because Morrison's using tactics of backing up, setting himself, throwing that hook like right there, and then backing away. If Foreman is forced to use his legs repeatedly here and basically make this a big ring, how much does this help Morrison later? I think Morrison can outspeed Foreman if this was a 20-rounder. He'll always have that, that, that bounce in his legs. But what George should be doing is what all fighters should do. You want to wear down somebody. There's a good right hand by Morrison. Work on Morrison's body to take those legs away. It's interesting to think of Tommy Morrison and think of him wanting a big ring. But when you're in there with Foreman, there's no ring big enough. <laughs> Not at all. But, but Morrison is using his footwork. I mean, like you said earlier, he's using his head. He's moving it. That's something we haven't seen from Tommy Morrison because he's usually, the fight's over by now. He's usually brawling his way to, vi to victory. Now he's using his smarts. Tommy Morrison presenting a moving target for Foreman and a nice crisp hook by Tommy Morrison. He does have a good aspect of a game plan for this fight. And that good right to the ribs. That was a smart punch by Tommy Morrison. He keeps winging that right hand, that's fine, but be careful because George has a good left hook himself. If he counters and Morrison's out of position, it could be a problem for Tommy. Now, wherever you are on the floor for Tommy Morrison, when you fire a punch, bring it back so that you have the defense ready to go. I think a couple of times George has reached Tommy and Tommy has backed up a little more to make George come to him, punch, and then back away again. Not the Tommy Morrison we're used to seeing, but a very smart tactic right now. Now, as offensively a great fighter as Foreman is, and of course you heard the announcement, highest knockout ratio in history, even someone of his caliber closing in on Tommy Morrison here, with Morrison moving, Foreman has trouble. Hard to hit a moving target, but George should just be throwing a couple punches right there. Just try and tap him on the body, because George hits so hard, a glancing shot to the body is still going to make you go out, like that right hand. Foreman scores with the right hand. The crowd comes to its feet, and expecting a lot more of that as this fight gets along. George Foreman with his first big punch in this fight toward the end of round two. Big end of the second round. Foreman gets the right hand in, then Morrison came back. Morrison did not wait. He used his punches. Trying to get around. Okay. Deep breath. Spit bucket. Good, George. You gotta use your seven a little more. Puff the baby up. Yeah. You waited in the corner, and you let him get off first. George has him right here in close, but Morrison takes a step back, throws that left, Morrison very smart. Look how he's backing up, staying away from coming under. Foreman trying to get set. There's the right hand by Morrison. Again, Tommy Morrison ducks the left, takes the right hand. Here's where Foreman comes back.
A tactically superb round, as you see there, by Tommy Morrison and Foreman answering at the end of the second. So we head into the third, and both George Foreman and Tommy Morrison have advertised their best weapons. Morrison working the jab, keeping that right hand up. That's another thing Tommy Morrison didn't do in the past. That hand would start to come down. He's covering up that chin because you can't take chances with Foreman and his, his knockout power. You can make a comparison to other sports or when athletes are injured as Mills Lane will come in and warn about the low blow. When athletes are injured, sometimes they'll cut down on their swing. And maybe the equivalent of this is Tommy Morrison knows he's in with a very strong fighter. So he's thinking defense first and offense in there. And he is better defensively. He's almost cut down his overall game plan, but he's doing it much better. And he's using his brains. There's George with a nice right hand. But Tommy's not letting George get into his rhythm. He's backing up, making the older guy walk to him. Then he hits him and backs up and makes him walk again. Smart tactics again by Morrison. A good example of what Tony just said as Morrison was able to duck his head and miss the second right hand that Foreman was throwing at him there. Foreman does not pull back. As, in fact, he rarely pulls back because he never goes backwards. So Tommy Morrison can gamble with a quick left hook or a right hand, but then get out of there as quick as you can. And that's why as Foreman just misses with a pounding right hand there, the legs are so critical when you're fighting George Foreman. If you make the ring big on him, you can definitely outpoint him, but if he closes in, forget it. Nice left hook by Foreman. Morrison came, comes back also. Another thing about boxing is you get hurt by the punches you don't see. Morrison is standing far enough away from Foreman. He can see the punches coming and roll with them. Still seeing good hand speed by Tommy Morrison. He took one hook, then came back with two shots of his own. Foreman tries to stalk, but cannot cut down the distance quickly enough. Foreman just comes forward like a tank. Morrison's got to be able to move from side to side, give Foreman angles to make Foreman change directions and waste energy. Foreman utilizing his jab, forced to use his legs. Morrison retreating, but not straight back. He's retreating on angles. Foreman misses with that wild left hook, but depending on where you were sitting, it was a flush shot to the jaw. Morrison's hands are down, so he's, he's sticking that chin out, which is not good. A little sense of bravery perhaps coming over Tommy Morrison and some unhealthy bravado to be sure. Tommy should try and throw a jab every now and then just to make George stop so he can regroup and back up. There's one. So the drama continues to slightly intensify as Tommy Morrison and George Foreman come into the final stages of round three. And we'll be back with round four right after this. Time. George Foreman and Tommy Morrison start round four of their scheduled 12-rounder for the WBO heavyweight title. Morrison showing good footwork and good hand speed, especially with the jab. Foreman comes right back at him. You talked about footwork, Dave. George Foreman's feet are coming forward. Look how they're pointed. Morrison's right leg is planted sideways. He's trying to get some leverage so he can hold his ground and throw that left hook at his, but he's backing up, keeping the leg in that position. That's half your eye on the escape before you're <laughs> shooting it. Right, and a wise decision when you're fighting George Foreman. Come on, come on, watch out. Now Morrison has to be a little bit more busy here. Nice short right hand, but how about a shot to the body would be good. You don't want to trade punches with Foreman inside. So it picks up here, which would seem to be Foreman territory. Foreman missing over the top, uppercut by Foreman. Morrison right back in his face. This is surprising, Dave. I expected Morrison to either start brawling early or just keep doing what he did, stay outside. Now he wants to brawl with Foreman, who's got a heck of a punch. You can't take the brawling instinct away from fighters. <laughs> and this is the point in the fight against Ray Mercer where Tommy Morrison encountered some trouble. The first three rounds were brilliant, but Mercer then got to him. Morrison's mouth is open a little bit. Good shot to the stomach by uh, George. That's what George should do to take the legs away from Morrison. And if Foreman can do that, that would pay dividends later and prevent him from doing what you're seeing right now. 
following Morrison around, ring post to ring post. Because Morrison's going sideways like he's walking away from George, stopping, turning, and watching Foreman walk to him, walk toward him so he can figure out which way am I going to punch this guy instead of just going straight back and making it easier for Foreman. So Foreman continues in this round to have the action where he wants. Cornering Morrison, the question now is, can he draw a beat on him and fire the big shots? Talk about firing, that's what George should be doing. He has him. As hard as George hits, all you need to do is just tap him on the shoulder with a good shot. George is waiting a little bit too long, and Morrison, he has to keep firing and moving. And Morrison can't like where this fight is being held right now. He just misses George with the big sweeping right hand, which was getting in earlier. His offensive mode is still there, but Foreman is on top of him, and if you're a George Foreman fan, you like that. Foreman's hands are a little bit low also, so he's asking Morrison to throw punches. Foreman and Morrison showing a bit of both the slugging and the boxing here in round four. Are we heading for more free-for-all slugging, or will there be more boxing? We'll find out the answer in round five. Round five between George Foreman and Tommy Morrison. This is Dave Bontempo along with Tony Page. Glad you've joined us for this WBO Heavyweight Championship. And Tommy Morrison, Tony is off to a fast start in this battle. Surprising, uh, he usually brawls. Here he comes using his defense. Now he's back to slugging with uh, George Foreman. A different facet to Tommy Morrison we usually don't see. I've given Tommy Morrison three of the first four rounds. How about you? So have I. I have Morrison ahead 39-37. He's controlling the action using a unique defensive style of, of fighting as he goes backwards, which is kind of difficult. Most people have to plant themselves in boxing and throw punches. Morrison is going back to set himself, throw punches, get out of there because he doesn't want to taste the power of Foreman. Throughout the first four rounds, this is the type of discipline we've never seen from Tommy Morrison on a sustained basis. Usually, uh, this fight's over. <laughs> Tommy Morrison gets guys out of there. Here he's using some smarts, but he's using the uh, strange tactics of almost turning his back, walking away, making the old guy come to him, which is smart to make Foreman use his, his legs, but Foreman should be pounding the body to take those legs away. Some puzzling passivity by George Foreman when he gets Tommy Morrison cornered. And the point you made about Morrison moving, it's a wise one because you can't knock George Foreman out. No. Muhammad Ali did it, exhaustion, in their 1974 battle. There you see the popping right hand by Morrison. Foreman right back on top of him. Tony Morrison turned his back. As you had talked about, it was not a good move. No, because as you're turning around to find out where your man is, you could walk into a left hook and his lights out. Morrison has to be a little more careful when he does that. Now Morrison throws an uppercut from Oklahoma that does not <laughs> get anywhere near Foreman, but it shows that his trigger consciousness is back. Foreman did not parlay that advantage he had. If Foreman would just throw three punches all to the body, bring it up to the head, he might do some damage. Morrison looks a little winded. His mouth's open, arms are down. He's still backing up, though. Foreman doesn't look tired at all, but George isn't throwing that left jab. He usually has to plan himself to throw his jab. Tommy Morrison is ripe right now to be had by George Foreman, who fires the clubbing right hand. And Morrison is back in. Interesting round the score because George is, is the aggressor, but he's not throwing a lot of punches. Morrison gets inside, throws a couple, and gets away. It's like a, he's winning in flurries. Ineffective aggression for George Foreman. A very timely counter-punching by Tommy Morrison. And it will be difficult on the judges. So George Foreman has indeed gotten to Tommy Morrison in the fifth round, will he be able to do it again? We'll find out. Tommy Morrison gets hit to the stomach by George Foreman, but comes right back with a left hook. Morrison's staying busy when he gets in there because he doesn't want George to get on a roll where he's fighting from behind. Here's where he made that bad move, spinning around. Well, Morrison is off to a nice start in this bout. Let's take a look at how it figures numerically. 
Morrison, 254th thrown, 112 to 90 landed. Foreman Tony has been more economical in his punches with 63%. Morrison has landed more, and that's the look you get it. why the judges have a hard time sometimes. Tommy Morrison is throwing a lot of punches, which is something we're not used to. He may miss a few, but, but when people see, when judges see a fighter throwing that many punches, they figure, oh, they must be landing. George is just husbanding his punches, but he needs to kick it up a bit. He needs to throw more power shots and just be busy to show the judges, hey, I'm still in the fight. Tommy Morrison had a better training camp in terms of stamina, road work, and sticking with the diet. He knew exactly what he was up against here with George Foreman. And Mills Lane will warn George Foreman about going low. And I like the way he just gets in and out. Without the lecture, just makes the point. I, I like that in a referee. You don't have to do a lot of talking once the bout gets started. Just tell the guy real quick. And the amateurs, you don't even say anything. But you get in, get out, let the fighters go back to what they're supposed to do. Some referees make it center stage for themselves in those situations. And these are highly skilled professional athletes. And the warning should be enough, according to Mills Lane. And we're into the second minute of the sixth round with Morrison trying the hook. Morrison planted himself. His legs are a little farther apart. Threw to left, got out of there. George is just waiting. He's like looking for one particular punch to throw. And by the time he makes up his mind to throw it, Morrison's scooting away. And the punch George Foreman wants, Tony, is that clubbing right hand. Because you look at Morrison, his left hand is down around his chest. The chin has a bullseye on it. George just has to be able to land the punch. And he can't as long as Morrison keeps moving. When you see Morrison cornered here, you wonder about the legendary Foreman uppercut. He should be throwing a lot of punches. I still think when you got a guy that's bouncing around, you have to at least invest two rounds of just going to the body. Maybe you don't win the rounds, but you slow your man down for later in the fight. Good left hook by Tommy Morrison. He gets the angle and delivers the goods. Now Morrison can see Foreman's punches coming, but I don't know if George is fast enough to get out of the way of Morrison's punches when he leaps in there with him. Especially, there's a good example when Morrison fires his right hand over the gloves of Foreman and around, George, for the moment, loses the sight of that shot coming from the angle, and it catches him. We're seeing some good speed by Morrison. This is not where he wants to be, and George does not take advantage. No, George is just frozen. He had an opportunity. In fact, Morrison's been going to his right after he plants himself. You think George might figure it out, but just the same, he's right in front of him. Throw some punches, George. And for Foreman, a quiet round, and Morrison gaining confidence, fires two punches in there. And although he opened himself up, Tommy Morrison has had a very good round six as he closes off the first half of this title bout. There's a look at Tommy Morrison. We start the second half of this WBO Heavyweight Championship bout. George Foreman, Tommy Morrison. This is Dave Bontempo along with Tony Page. Tony, Morrison accentuated a good first half performance with round six. He sure did. He knows how to, to fight when he gets inside. But he throws a nice right to Foreman. But one thing Morrison is doing, he's not jeopardizing his chances. He's throwing the punches, nice uppercut gets out of there so he doesn't have to slug, but he's staying right in front of him now. Big right by Morrison. Foreman comes back. This is where Big George wants to wage this bout. It takes all the legs away, and it just becomes a slugfest. A bomb by Tommy Morrison. There's the left hook. When he sits down on his punches, Tommy Morrison can really bring it. And you forget George Foreman has a world-class chin. He takes a great punch. He took a couple of good shots there, didn't even blink, and kept coming forward. There were some terrific punches by Tommy Morrison, and a couple of them were the right hands, which he has not been noted for. It's funny. Earlier in the bout, Tommy Morrison used his footwork, made George come to him. Then he changes up, gets inside, throws a lot of punches, goes back outside. George has the same offense coming forward trying to throw a punch but can't get set because Morrison won't let him Tommy Morrison thus far in this bout is reaching the expectations that people around him have had for so long that he's not just a big banger that he can box he's shown boxing ability and that he can outpoint guys with speed 
along with flashes of power. Gee, using boxing and Tommy Morris in, in the same uh, sentence. They've been doing that for years, and then people say, but look at the results. He gets caught, his chin is suspect, but in this bout, Tommy Morrison has moved more. Right now, though, he's giving George Foreman a chance to slug with him. You don't want to do that. Here's where Tommy should be getting out of range. And actually, Tommy Morrison is waking George Foreman up here. He's got Foreman moving, he's out pointing him. Now he's breathing new life into Big George. Well, it's funny how Tommy sometimes goes straight back and sometimes almost goes sideways, just like there, away from Foreman, makes Foreman come after him. Gives, gives Foreman a chance to get set in punch. That can be pretty dangerous. As we said, Tommy Morrison, brilliant first half with the movement. This round, some movement, yet more of the in-close strategy that goes against what he did earlier, but he's willing to trade. Morrison setting himself up, trying to go to the body, then get away. So Tommy Morrison has shown in this round, he can trade with Big George and have that trade to his advantage. We'll see if he comes back with that. You're in control. You're in good control. I want you to take 30 seconds. All right, give yourself 30 of movement. I have to have more seven. You let him come in there all day long just now without throwing your seven. His eyes are thrown shut. We I need your hands up. I need your position a little bit better. And need more. Look at Tommy Mars. He keeps the distance, gets him in. Nice right hand. Look how he's in position, ducks the punches, comes back. He's got to keep throwing punches at George. You just can't let the big guy get set because George will fire back. Morrison again, looking for that opening. Foreman just missed the right hand. That might have been the end of the fight had George landed that one flush. We start the eighth round. Tommy Morrison, George Foreman. Morrison off to a good start on our scorecards. Tony, I've got Morrison winning five of the rounds and winning comfortably. How about you? There's a Gil Clancy scorecard through seven. How about yours? I have Morrison right, a little right, further on, ahead, 69 right. to 64. He's using boxing skills, which I didn't know he had. He's doing what he has to do to win. He's not getting into a slugfest with George, which is what George wants everybody to do. In round seven, ironically, Morrison gave Foreman the chance to slug and may have outpunched him. You know, that's, that's taking a chance, though. You don't want to do that. George would be 80 years old and knocking out half the planet. You want to give him angles. You, I'd like to see Marson throw that left jab, though, and bring his hands up. George Foreman could be sitting down in a rocking chair when he's 80, <laughs> Tony, and knock a few guys out. So Tommy Morrison wants to be moving, and you get the impression from his corner when they said you're not using your seven that that might be the jab. I think part of the thing about Morrison, he's taking deep breaths in the ring now, so he's trying to get that second win. He's used a lot of energy bouncing around and moving around. Oh, oh. just a bit low. And George right. Foreman knows it. Mills Go Lane here. tells him. And hey. Tommy Morrison hey. will have, if George, he needs it, up here. to five minutes. You get five, time. Brought the, brought the time. stool in already. That's kind okay. of premature, don't you minutes. think? You, you want to ask him first? You have, you get five minutes. They know he's got the five okay. minutes. Left hook by Foreman. Uh, I think he got him on the Tom second M in point, Tommy. Okay? Or the first M, rather. You, you got five minutes. You're ten minutes ready. Yeah, right. It's got to stand for menacing right now. I think what, what saved him is Marston was kind of up in the air when it hit him. And George knows that he strayed low with it. But when fighters are tired sometimes, their punches will not have the same snap. They'll be a little bit lazy with them. And with George, it drifted down. And it was good, good, good. Command by Mills Lane. So he told his corner, you can't talk okay. to Tommy. He has to get himself Tommy, better. Go. Got to get better on, on his own, and there he is, ready to go. Right. They don't want the corners to jump in with strategy in all types of situations. During the three minutes, they're not going to give the fighter a strategy timeout. They're going to give him a recuperative timeout. So here we are in the eighth round. Foreman went low with that shot. Maybe a symbol of his frustration at times in getting to Tommy Mars. Well, those kind of punches will, will definitely slow you down. 
but I think George is a little bit too late in this fight. He should have been throwing those punches early because Morrison has been running all night. But who would have expected that from Tommy Morrison? You cannot expect that when you've looked over his past performances and known that against some journeyman guys, he's been in some real trouble because he's walked into shots, taken knockdowns, and been in a lot of difficulty. I mean, Carl the Truth Williams down twice. Twice oh, yeah. in one round with Carl Williams, who was not noted as a huge puncher. Not at all. So Tommy Morrison, according to the experts, would walk in and get popped by George. But Morrison has shown that great in